I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you already clicked. Um, hold on, hold on. Welcome back guys and thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about strut bars and how to properly set preload. Under the hood of your 350Z you're going to find your strut bar, also known as a strut tower brace. This comes on a lot of sports vehicles and its purpose is to add rigidity and support to the chassis, primarily obviously in the engine bay. The primary purpose of a strut bar is to prevent chassis twisting, particularly in high velocity turns where you're having a lot of momentum um, and with uh, shifting in g-forces you'll be able to have a lot of applied force on either side what the strut uh, tower brace will do is add that rigidity and support so that when you are turning and one side is leaning in towards the other it's going to have something to lean up against um, by connecting to the other side and by being able to lean against that it's going to add support and prevent it from twisting kind of like that song now if you're new to working on cars don't get this confused with the sway bar the strut bar is on top and acts primarily in preventing chassis twisting the sway bar also called an anti roll bar is on the bottom of the car that connects the control arms the lower control arms uh, from one side to the other connects them to each other sway bars the main purpose uh, for a sway bar is to prevent body roll during turning whereas the main purpose of the strut tower bar uh, slash brace is to prevent chassis twisting I'm actually a big fan of the stock 350Z strut bar because it actually allows you to adjust the position of the bar as well as adjust tension or preload which not all strut bars are capable of doing um, and there's a lot of aftermarket strut bars for the Z as well and a lot of them cannot actually accomplish both of these things uh, so I'm not exactly sure uh, what the reason would be to change the strut uh, bar uh, apart from obviously if you needed to get a different one because of clearance issues if you end up doing uh, mods to the intake manifold or intake system or any other mods that obviously will require uh, a different clearance. I'm not sure if this is just my preconception or not, but I have a feeling that a lot of people after working on their strut bar, after having it off and when they reinstall it, uh, I have a feeling they just end up putting it back on, tightening it down and not necessarily setting a preload or setting any tension to it. Now tension is good to be put on these if you have the availability to do that just because it's going to add extra support. So technically what you want to do after you put the bar in place is to actually adjust the tensioning so that the bar ends up pushing outward on the struts uh, slash the frame. Why? Uh, think of yourself uh, being in a, in a corridor or a hall and putting your arms out on either side of the wall and having a friend um, uh, behind you kind of uh, pushing you back and forth. So as you have your arms stretched out against the, uh, uh, against the wall, if they're just loosely against the wall, you'll still be able to catch yourself so that you prevent yourself from leaning back and forth, which is what's happening during these chassis movements. However, if apart from just holding your arm out on the wall, you actually are pushing against the wall, that friend that's being able to push you back and forth, they're not going to be able to move you as much. You're going to have uh, much more planted support. This is why, you know, if you do that on a wall, you can actually kind of climb upward just by uh, having tension. Uh, so that's the concept of setting the preload, and I'm going to show you how to properly do it. Once you're done working on your car and you have your strut bar back on, the first thing you're going to want to do is just adjust the positioning. Now in order to adjust the positioning, these are already pre-loosened, you're going to get these lock nuts inward 
And in order to adjust the positioning, you're turning this middle uh, nut right over here. Now, in order to make the bar squeeze in, you're going to turn it towards the rear of the car. In order to make the bar push out, you're going to turn it towards the front of the car. What you want to do as you turn this is to make on both sides the inner edge here of the hole line up with the holes for the bolts. The reason you want the inner edges to touch is that once you tighten them down and you set the preload, the preload is going to be pushing out. So you want this to make contact here obviously as opposed to it being on the other side. So make both sides look like this for each of the holes as close as you can get them uh, for the edges to line up. Once you have all of these tightened down on both sides, you're ready to set your preload. So to set your preload, we're going to be pushing outward to add more uh, tension. And in order to do that, you're going to turn the middle towards the front of the car. You're going to want one to one, to one and a half full turn. So the easiest way to do it is to do 90 uh, increments. You're going to go um, 90 degrees a turn, like this 90 degrees, four to six times. And as you're doing this, you will start to feel the tension that's being created. And done. Once you have this done, you're going to get your lock nuts back in position and tighten them down. Tighten them down fully and then you are done. That's how you set the preload. Now all of this is actually supposed to be done with the car up in the air, letting gravity hang to actually uh, allow for symmetry between both sides just in case you are on unequal ground. Um, and uh, that's the, the proper way that it is recommended to be done. But once this is done, you are all set to go and that's how you properly add tension slash preload to your 350Z strut bar. Now remember, if you have added preload or tension to your strut bar on your Z, the next time that you take the strut bar off if for whatever needs you may have as far as working on the vehicle, you're actually going to want to do the reverse here and back this up about one to one and a half turns towards the rear of the car in order to let that tension relax. The reason being you don't want to take the bolts off with that tension still in place just in case uh, you don't ruin any of the threads of the bolts. So do remember that. Quick update on the oil catch can install in case you were wondering if it was catching oil. Here you go. This is with about 500 to 600 miles of driving. So we do have some oil in the catch can. If you want to learn all about catch cans, check out my oil catch can video right here.